And I, I'm wondering about how much anybody in Washington is, is being introspective at all about why there is this kind of opening for disruptors, if not necessarily these individuals. You were censured in the House last year uh, for, in their view, holding positions of power during the Trump presidency as, as chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. And according to them, quote, abusing this trust by saying there was evidence of collusion between Trump's campaign and Russia. And I wonder if you are feeling at all introspective at all about that that was, according to your, according to the Mueller report and according to your, your Republican colleagues, an overstatement. And I wonder if you think in any way you, you uh, help set the table for these disruptors. Adam Schiff, the senator from California, joined Jake Tapper on CNN. Let's watch and see what went down. First of all, it wasn't an overstatement. There is evidence of collusion. The Trump campaign manager was meeting with Russian intelligence and giving them internal polling data, just to give you one example. Uh, and the Mueller report sets all this out. It does say, quote, the investigation did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in its election interference activities, which doesn't mean that he didn't, you know, that there weren't meetings, but uh, they didn't find evidence. He says that too. He says the fact that we didn't find proof beyond a reasonable doubt doesn't mean there wasn't right. evidence of uh, conspiracy or coordination. So, but look, that's not what people were voting on. Last week, Megyn Kelly dropped a bombshell, reporting that Oprah was caught lying about being paid by the Kamala Harris campaign. Let's check it out. I'm, I'm a gun you... owner. Tim Rawls is a gun. I did not gun... know that. <laughs> If somebody and I that breaks in my house, they're getting shot. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I, I hear that. I hear that. Probably should not have said that. <laughs> but my I, staff will deal with that later. Yeah. <laughs> How do you think the election went? Not talking about the election. Thank you very much. Oh, is it true that they paid you a million dollars for the endorsement for Kamala? Not true. Not true. Okay. I was paid nothing ever. Do you think Oprah really didn't get paid, or is there more to the story? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. MSNBC's Morning Joe hosts Mika Brzezinski and Joe Scarborough surprised their audience by sharing that they went to Mar-a-Lago to meet Donald Trump for the first time in seven years. You'll want to hear what they had to say. For the past week, Joe and I have heard from so many people, from political leaders to regular citizens deeply dismayed by several of President-elect Trump's cabinet selections, and they are scared. Last Thursday, we expressed our own concerns on this broadcast and even said we would appreciate the opportunity to speak with the president-elect himself. On Friday, we were given the opportunity to do just that. Joe and I went to Mar-a-Lago to meet personally with President-elect Trump. It was the first time we have seen him in seven years. Now, we talked about a lot of issues, including abortion, mass deportation, threats of political retribution against political opponents and media outlets. We talked about that a good bit. And it's going to come as no surprise to anybody who watches this show, has watched it over the past year or over the past decade, that we didn't see eye to eye on a lot of issues. And we told him so. What we did agree on was to restart communications. My father often spoke with world leaders with whom he and the United States profoundly disagreed. Uh, that's a task shared by reporters and commentators alike. We had not spoken to President Trump since March of 2020, other than a personal call Joe made to Trump on the morning after the attempt on his life in Butler, Pennsylvania. In this meeting, President Trump was tearful. He was upbeat. He seemed interested in finding common ground with Democrats on some of the most divisive issues. And for those asking why we would go speak to the president-elect during such fraught times, especially between us, I guess I would ask back, why wouldn't we? Five years of political warfare has deeply divided Washington and the country. We have been as clear as we know how in expressing our deep concerns about President Trump's actions and words in the coarsening of public debate. But for nearly 80 million Americans, election denialism, public trials, and January 6th were not as important as the issues that moved them to send Donald Trump back to the White House with their vote. Joe and I realize it's time to do something different. And that starts with not only talking about Donald Trump, but also talking with him. They sat down with Trump at Mar-a-Lago to address their concerns about his cabinet picks and leadership. They openly admitted they've been critical of him, but felt it was important to have a direct conversation. The meeting covered key issues like abortion, deportation, and Trump's treatment of his opponents and the media. While they didn't agree on much, 
They acknowledge the importance of restarting communication in such a divided political climate. They noted Trump was emotional and open to finding common ground, which they saw as a positive step. They also emphasize that millions of Americans voted for Trump despite controversies, and engaging in dialogue with him was necessary to understand and address those voters' priorities. The meeting highlighted the value of having tough conversations, even with people you strongly disagree with. If you enjoy this type of content, please like and subscribe. It really helps me a ton. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.